Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. And right now we are about to launch Moon Base 1, our surface base on the moon. Well, uh, just a tiny little module that can carry two people and has enough supplies for a little while. Uh, I think it's a year's of supplies, so that's pretty good. But first of all, we have to launch it. So here we go. I'm using KOS a KOS script based on my standard KOS script and we will see how it goes. Uh, for this launch we are lighting the boosters first but keeping the core unlit. The core will light in uh, 100 seconds into the launch I believe. Okay and we're off. So this is a Nico rocket. Uh, we've got 16 NK-33 engines and then the core has four NK-43 engines. That's all uh, kerosene and oxygen. And then the upper stage is a single J-2 engine burning hydrogen and oxygen. Unfortunately, I don't have any fancy cameras on here, but since we are using KOS, we could like go into cinematic mode. As far as further activities, we do have to do a minor uh, maneuver node with an AJS mission right there in between while this is flying on its way to the moon. Uh, we have a light lunar lander that will complete in five days. So presumably after we get this landed on the moon, we'll be able to send that lander. It's a single Kerbal lander. Uh, we are not going to send it crewed. We're going to send it to the station. It'll dock at the station and pick up crew there. We're following a fairly steep trajectory because of course we need to give enough time not only for the core stage to burn, but also the J2 stage. Okay, getting ready for booster separation, and we'll make it all cinematic and everything. I'll get my mouse out of the way. Here we go. All 16 engines performed nominally, so we don't have any imbalance in the boosters. Now, mostly in this series, we're going to be moving away from the Nico rockets, which is what I call this based on the NK engines. We are going to move on to the Fiji rockets using F-1As and J-2s. That's partly because, uh, well, we do have extra money. We, we, we can afford the slight extra cost of F1s. I did reduce the cost of the F1s from FASA uh, below what they are by default with Realism Overhaul because otherwise they're completely uncompetitive. And also, it was a little bit weird, the pricing. Especially how much more the F1A costed over the F1. Another thing is, there's less lag if you're only using one engine instead of four, and uh, all four of these combined still don't add up to the thrust of a single F1, so we will have smoother launches, which is nice. We have not unlocked the RD-170, which would also be able to replace four of these. Okay, getting ready for first stage separation. Ignition. Alright, the J2 is on, and we had no problems with the four NK-43s, so everything is good. Uh, let's extend some antennae, I think. Though these are Commutron 32s, they have some range even if you don't extend them. So now you can see our little base. It is a tiny base. I'm a little bit worried about the power situation because of course the nights on the moon are very long. It does have a lot of internal power, uh, 230,000 electric charge, but that's not necessarily enough. It also carries the Delta Avionics unit with it. It needed an uh, uncrewed unit and it has plenty of solar panelry, so decided to go with that core anyway. We are trying out the radiator panels to see if they can well at least keep the liquid oxygen here from boiling off 
and uh, we will only be able to figure that out once we are on this stage. This stage operates more or less like the upper stage of the Saturn V, uh, so it's going to complete orbit and then also transfer us to the moon. Uh, lunar transfer will cost about 3,200. Uh, orbit is going to cost us 1,200 here, so we've got about 200 meters per second extra. Since we're not rendezvousing with any sort of station or anything, our exact approach to the moon doesn't quite matter. We would like to land somewhere lucrative, but I don't think we have a resource scanner around the moon yet. So this is just going to be a test to see whether we can maintain a base on the moon, and this will be our emergency secondary base. A more permanent base, uh, a resource extraction base, might need to be closer to the poles, which would not be easy to get to from the station or get back to the station from. Alright, so that is orbit, and we do have extra fuel. That is good. And, uh, well, anyway, let's let's turn on the radiators. I don't know if they're going to work to eliminate boil off here. Well, we have our trip plotted out. Our maneuver is in two and a half minutes. Let us have the RCS turn us towards the node. Hmm, I don't see the RCS here firing. That appears to be correct. I don't think I need to activate this RCS. No, this is not 1.2.2. I guess it's moving a bit. It's moving a bit. Let me. No, they don't. These these guys don't seem to be operating right. Interesting. Might need to fix that. But the J2 seems to be very stable. So, ignition. We'll have its gimbling do the rest. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. Okay, 1.1 meters per second off. Uh, we won't have this handle that particular part since it doesn't look like the, the thrusters on here are working properly. So... So, okay, let's separate. In fact, even these don't seem to be quite active. That's rather annoying. Uh, for now, I will produce an SOI change alarm. There we go. And we do need to take care of the other mission. And I think that's a Jupiter one. Let's see. Okay, so here we are, and what we want is a course correction that gets us an IO encounter, and that'll cost 35.6 meters per second. Okay, well, let's try and make a maneuver closer to it to see if there's anything we can do about that little bit of inclination. I thought that we would be at an ascending or descending node with respect to IO, but all right, so we're going to have a maneuver after 20 days. Let's schedule that. And we can continue on with Moon Base 1 now. Okay, it is worth pointing out that we are not seeing any liquid oxygen boil off. So maybe the cryogenic tanks are already good enough to prevent it, or maybe the radiators really are helping. We really will only be able to tell with liquid hydrogen, not with oxygen. But here we are entering the SOI of the moon. And we'll get rid of that alarm and proceed to periapsis where we will attempt to make orbit. Okay, well we couldn't do it right at periapsis because we didn't have communication, but we are just a little bit past periapsis and our orbital burn is underway. Uh, unfortunately, this is a very long stage. It's almost 12 minutes, which is the maximum burn time for the RD-58. But, uh, well, hopefully we won't be too lopsided, but it is going to get a little bit lopsided. Let's use surface negative relative velocity, and that is going to allow me to pitch down. You'll see right now my periapsis is going down. I want to stop that, and I'm essentially going to do an inefficient radial burn here to uh, cut that out a bit. 
as you can see now the periapsis has stopped going down and is starting to go up and so you can use this surface negative relative velocity instead of retrograde it's pretty close it's just uh, this you know uh, doesn't have the rotation of the planet included it does appear that we have a little bit of a uh, oscillation problem or this engine doesn't gimbal as well as it should something is going on with uh, holding the heading I'm telling it to. But in any case, we are making orbit just fine. And as you can see, the stage currently has 2,400 meters per second left. And in total to land, we have 3,300. So that seems to be plenty. I think that'll do just fine. We could really pinpoint exactly what location we want to land at with that much delta V. And that's the point. Now, the reason I'm pitching down like this is we have limited ignitions here, though. Having three, I think we can probably switch it off at this point and just wait till we get to periapsis again to bring our orbit down. But we do need to save one ignition at least to um, burn for descent. And we have to keep track of that. And we, we want to land over here, so actually more specifically right there. That looks like an interesting location anyway. But we'll have to wait until periapsis now. Well, we still have communication thanks to Tugmaster 5000. Whoops. Okay. Oh, shoot. Oops, and vapor and feed lines. Well, I'm just messing up all the things. Right when I was trying to throttle up, we lost connection. But again, that doesn't matter because remote tech doesn't care if you throttle up. So uh, one thing it does care about is staging. Anyway, we're very stable now, but I messed up and we lost an ignition because of that. Okay, that'll do. And I have to be very careful not to mess up the ignition next time. But we still have plenty for landing. And so let's make use of it. Uh, looks like things have precessed a bit. We'll, we'll land right there. I'm going to have MechJeb landing guidance to just give me an idea of where that spot is while I'm in the flight screen. So, shield landing predictions. Uh, pick target on map. Right about there. Alright, so we've got seven minutes on this stage, and we're going to have to use all of it. And then we've got three minutes on the next stage. If I plot a little point on my orbit, I see that it's seven minutes to that point. So, the thing is, we'll be slowing down along the way. So, we're ultimately going to take longer than seven minutes to get to that point. Anywhere around here is fine. Where We could land in this crater, we could land over there. It all looks very interesting. Okay, we are doing our descent burn. Our legs are down. Though, basically we'll be sitting on the belly of this, I think. Well, it's wiggling a lot all over the place right now. So I'm just going to go pitch zero right now. We should be, we're landing short of the target, but it's still sort of in my expected range and looks like the target is right on those hills, so maybe if we're landing short, that's a better bet. Okay, well, we're running out of this stage pretty much as planned, getting rid of all our horizontal velocity, but it's wiggling all over the place right now. So I think I'm just going to shut down and ditch it now. Gotta remember it takes a little bit of time to stage. Alright, those engines are ready. Got better control over ourselves. I'm watching the suicide burn countdown. Hopefully it, it knows what it's doing. I don't think so though. I mean, I'm looking at our true altitude going down very quickly. Let's just be safe. This was an expensive mission after all.
impact recorded. Yeah, we have that one mini probe that has a seismometer. And if we slam anything into the surface of the moon, we can get science for it. Okay, let's just... Oh, SAS will take... Okay, well, it doesn't take that long to shut off, thankfully. Shut on. Oh, turn on. I'm trying to land here. Can't do words. Okay, we are down. All right. Um, I guess we can just retract the legs, but it might give more stability if we have them out. On the other hand, there might be glitchiness. I don't know. Where are we? Moon's major craters right there. There's the orbit of our station. We do have plenty of supplies. Look at our food, water, and oxygen there for two Kerbals that that'll last for a while. So hopefully we can coordinate properly. Our intended first lander will be done in about 18 hours. But then again, it's going to take a few days to get here, and by that time, things would have rotated out of position. We might have to attempt a, a nighttime landing with that one on this side. We'll see. Okay, but it's here. I think it would be prudent to switch off the engines. Just in case. Okay, this will be our next launch. It is a light lunar lander, Mark II, on uh, Fiji 11. And I'll explain all that after we get the launch started. The launch script is in. Hopefully it's correct. And so, run Fiji 11. The main reason the launch scripts have to be different is because of staging. But there are some minor tweaks that might be necessary uh, depending on the exact configuration. This is a pretty normal sort of launcher. We've got a lower stage that provides about 4,000 meters per second and an upper stage that will complete orbit. In this case, the Fiji system, the numbers are first digit, the number of F1s, and the second digit, number of J2s on the second stage. So here we have one F1 and one J2. So, it's the Fiji 11. This is the first time we are launching this particular configuration. We've got 1,400 data units on the J2S so far, and uh, it does not look like the F1 is being read by test flight, suspiciously enough. You'd expect that it would be, but it isn't. Now, this is just an F1, this is not an F1A, and that's because with an F1A, the thrust to weight ratio of this rocket gets a bit too high uh, if we want to ever Kerbal rate it. That's sort of a big if, but right now, of course, there is no Kerbal on board. That required a sort of fix because the Gemini lander can, I guess you call it, lander pod, you'll see what it is. It's not a Gemini capsule. Um, that thing. Uh, if even though there's another core, even though there's another probe core there, if you don't have a Kerbal in it, uh, it prevents communication, prevents commands being delivered to the rocket. So I don't know why that happens. It happened with the Gemini pod as well. Uh, even though we had enough of the avionics and everything, even though we have another probe core, even if the probe, the other probe core is the root part, it still cause problems. So what I had to do was I had to allow for the Gemini lander can, lander pod, uh, to be controlled uncrewed. Which will be helpful anyway because we might want to send engineers to the surface or uh, or otherwise non-pilots. Okay, the F1 is almost done here. Oh, I forgot to mention the F1 has a recoverability system. And I tested it, and it does work. It's got floats, and uh, it's got parachutes, so it separates off on its own uh, from the tank. So it'll uh, it'll come back down on its own, and the parachutes have to orient it. It doesn't have a core or anything. It doesn't have any control at all. It has no RCS. It just armed the parachutes, extended the floats, and then it has to survive on its own. Well, we'll see whether uh, Stage Recovery likes that or not. Let's get rid of the other messages indicating that it didn't recover any other stages. 
So yeah, this is the the little lander, lightweight lander that comes with FASA. And for a single Kerbal, it's the most efficient thing that you could come up with. Uh, maybe the Herp pod or one of those pods from USI colonization might be a little bit lighter. I, I did reprice those pods to make them in line with uh, Realism Overhaul. So we can use them now. I unlocked them. And so you might start seeing USI colonization parts soon. But here we have a reusable lander. That's the goal of this. It has to land on the moon and then take off from the moon again. Bring the Kerbal back to orbit to the station. So it's got a lot of Delta V. It could also be used to transfer a Kerbal to the moon and capture an orbit around the moon and dock with the station. It can also come back too. It can leave lunar orbit and return to low Earth orbit. So it's quite versatile. Okay, getting to the end of the stage and just about to make orbit. We are experiencing 3G's. And there we go. All right. Okay, well, we are time warping to the maneuver node, but I wanted to note that liquid oxygen is boiling off right now. So those radiators that we put on the previous mission definitely were preventing boil off of the liquid oxygen. This is just a kerosene liquid oxygen tank. I believe I would have, well, I don't know. The question is on the other mission, did I make that a cryogenic tank and did I make this one a default tank? Or are they both default or both cryogenic? That could make a difference too. So, but anyway, uh, there's hope, there's hope. The reason that we're interested in preventing boil off, of course, is for the nervous stage, which is all liquid hydrogen and would lose a lot of delta V, hang out in orbit waiting for payloads because it has to dock with its payloads, right? So if it's going to be spending time in orbit waiting for the payload to dock with it or, or docking with the payload, uh, we need to make sure that it doesn't lose all of its delta V hanging out. And if the radiators can prevent that as sort of an active cooling mechanism using electric charge, well, that will make the Nerva work that much better. As far as constructing the Nerva, by the way, uh, we've sort of set it off for a little while. And uh, what we're building is uh, two more of these. And a Science Lab 1, uh, that's a module for our Earth orbit station. And the same module is going to be sent to the Moon Orbit Station. This is just your normal science lab. It's a stock science lab. So that's what we're building right now. Nerva could have helped with transferring those, but uh, we used legacy hardware, basically. The thing is, uh, the Nerva... I'm a little bit nervous about the Nerva. And so when we test it, I don't want to test it with... Uh, something as expensive as the science labs. The science labs are really expensive. So we'll, we'll have something else to transfer it first, like uh, maybe maybe just a fuel tank, fuel uh, the fuel depots that I had so much trouble with. But that was the previous series. Now we are on to Beyond History, and so so things will be better. Okay, that should be good enough. And it says unstable, very risky. All right, throttle up and ignition. It's still not being honest about our Delta V. I'm not sure why. On the bright side, technically we don't have to like directly land on the moon on this one. It is carrying a full fuel load and if it so happens we need to top it off at the station, that's fine. It needs to get to the station anyway. We could have uh, launched it on a smaller lander, uh, and not a smaller lander, a smaller launcher, and just had it unfueled to begin with. Okay, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that... If we go closer in, we still have a an approach, but since it's not going to show it to me, I'll take the part that's willing to show me. Now, I think we can go straight there. Is that the case? No, it's a, it's in seven days we'll reach there. 
we are actually uh, going past the moon and coming back in. So we'll have to just schedule that and we have to turn to another AJS mission. This is not the one aimed at Io. This is another one. So let's take a look at what it's going to do. Okay, well this mission is in an interesting situation. It's uh, doing a maneuver to bring itself into the plane of the system. Right now it's actually going sort of polar, which is bad, but it costs a bit to actually get into the plane of the system. And then after that it has to do this maneuver here. And as a result of that maneuver, it's going to have a flyby of Callisto. Now it would be better to make orbit around Jupiter closer to Jupiter. This doesn't have too much delta V to work with, but I, it might have enough to swing both of these maneuvers. I'm not sure. The trouble is that this upper portion is only using RCS, so we can't really tell how much delta V is there. Well, anyway, let's do what we have planned and see what happens. So, uh, node is there. Let's just time warp. Okay, delete on close and ignition let's get the magnetometer boom out and that'll take a while anyway okay uh, let's not have it all s oh right SAS is just not going to happen for a while let's get rid of that well presumably we'll still get that Callisto encounter right there after a maneuver in 70 days to make orbit around Jupiter. So let's go with that. I don't remember if we've done any science around Callisto, so any sort of encounter with it is promising. And this mission doesn't have much fuel to do too much around Jupiter, not compared to the other missions that will be arriving later. So this is all situated and we can wait for this to fulfill its mission later. Now back to the Light Lunar Lander mission. Alright, we are in Lunar SOI with the Light Lunar Lander and unfortunately boil off has been pretty severe. Actually, it would have been less if I hadn't focused on this mission. I should have just turned to it after it reached periapsis or something. Anything but what we've done here. But yeah, uh, we are here now. And I would like to actually get closer on the periapsis than we are right now. And if we could focus on the moon, please. We can get rid of Kerbal Alarm Clock and target moon port 1, where we will pick up our Kerbal. Okay, so there's the moon. And in 10 minutes, we are going to capture around it. Probably we're going to have to ditch this stage after this burn. So, good thing we can control this without any Kerbal on board. Communication's a bit of a problem though, because we've got the Commutron 16s down here. Maybe it'll be more legit to keep this along. I don't know if we can though. And shut down. Well, I mean, close approach distance is only 117 kilometers from the station. There's not much fuel left here. And our periapsis is 20, 20, uh, 22 kilometers there. Ooh, that's pretty close to the surface. Going to have a close shave. I guess we can try restarting this engine here at periapsis. Well, whatever is left in here. There we go. All right, off it goes. Uh, but I told you that was the root part over there, but now we want to control from here. And the wonder is that's why uh, that's why we had the problem with the delta V reading because that was the root part, and this wasn't. Well, it says we have 5,418 meters per second here, which is great because that's actually enough to catch around the moon all on its own and land and take off again. So that's a lot. Um, shows you how small this uh, lightweight lander can really is. Handy, and it's it's FASA, so it's technically approved by Realism Overhaul and everything. Sort of cheaty though, honestly, but don't tell anybody. Okay, we are getting ready to encounter the station. 
Our closest approach distance is 1.28 kilometers, and we still have 4,866 meters per second left according to that, so I usually budget 2,600 for landing and 2,200 for liftoff. That's more than enough. There should never be a condition where that would not be enough to land and return from the moon into lunar orbit. So we're, we're pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good right now. We actually spent a fair amount just trying to rendezvous with the station, and it's still got enough to land and take off again. Oops, must remember to sell the fuel down. This isn't what I was intending. I was intending for that transfer stage to do all the business here. But apparently we have too much fuel in this st in this uh, lander. I want more Delta V in the RD-58 stage and for it to do the maneuvers to rendezvous and then a Kerbal would have gotten into the pod to actually dock it. Okay, well we sort of have a docking port problem right now. And that's because we don't have a free docking port for the pod coming in. Uh, it would be nice if we could get rid of this. I wonder if we can. I think so. This this is a defunct one. It didn't work very well. I think it's got enough fuel for us to deorbit it and smack it into the moon. So let's clear it off. Alright, yes we can. Good times. It's a bit of an expense, but it was badly balanced. I had issues with it. And let's just make sure there's no crew on. Transfer crew. No, there does not appear to be any crew on board. Good. Quickly, before the other pod comes in. Alright. Alright, that'll do the trick. Okay, set as target. Control from here. Yep. This is a very good pod system. Again, the pod is from the FASA pack. The rest is all procedural tanks and tweak scale landing struts and a docking port. Nothing too complicated. Be sure to make your own. Okay, here we are scooting right in. We couldn't dock on that one. That's an Apollo docking system port. So that's why we have to clear the other mini lunar lander. Incidentally, it has two days worth of food, water, and oxygen on it, if you were wondering. So it can't do any... Uh, it would. We would probably have to fill it up with extra in order to have a Kerbal return home. Right now it's only configured as a lunar lander. We can't use it as a transfer vehicle from the moon to earth or earth to the moon. But considering how much extra delta V we had doesn't seem like much of a problem to add some more food, water, and oxygen. I think we have plenty of delta V here. That That would be quite easy. Still 4,800 meters per second, just about. The tanks directly connected to the thrusters are service module tanks, but the center one is a balloon tank, so that saved mass as well. Oop, we're a little bit off. Okay, we are docked. So, we've got a lunar lander ready here, we've got a lunar base to land at, uh, we will we will proceed with such operations next time. Let me turn off RCS, and uh, one of our Kerbals will get to attempt to occupy our base on the surface. And of course, it doesn't have to be any special staging to abort that attempt at landing, because there all the fuel in this lander is in one stage. So that's the good thing. We it looks like we do need to top off lander just in case I, I would feel a little bit better about that but anyway there you have it 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.